So here's the back of this thing. I'm going to put my finger here so it's spring doesn't. Well, so much for that. So I've got a little. So if you can see in there, there's like four little. Um, four little fins that we can see in the back of the keyway, which is kind of neat. So I've not seen that before. This is just. This is just dead. That normally gets engaged by the little pin that goes on this thing. So this goes in here. That pin grabs onto the cam. So now, for my next trick, it's just a half-inch um, bolt that I cut the end, cut the threads off of to keep all that shit from falling out. And here we have the top of the plug. Let's zoom in on that. So this is the top, faces away from the Bible. So there are three holes there, or three millings there, and two pins. Here's the key. And so those line up with those two holes there. Okay, and there's no more down here. Now I can see that they've flattened this area, so in principle they could put more pins in there. I don't know, I suspect these are not active. So those are what I think are passive pins on the top. Let's see if it'll let it focus for me. Okay. You can see that there it's a little notch so they don't fall in. A long bit goes through the plug. Okay, so here's the plug. These are the key pins. So there's six of them. I'm going to try to ease these out gently. There's number one. That's interesting. I'll show you these to you in a second here. Six, and we can see that these are, that's a steel pin, so a drill protection. That's spooled, that guy is spooled, that guy's normal, that guy's spooled, that guy's spooled, that guy's spooled. So we've got four, or five out of the six key pins are spooled, and they're probably not spooling that one to keep it from wobbling around in there, okay? So there's our key pins. By just looking at the shell straight on, you can see that little hole, or that little rid, um, what the hell am I talking about? A little milling at the top, and that's where those profile pins would engage. So if those get stuck up in there, then it's not gonna turn. So you have to have a key with the right little holes in it. Now obviously, they're passive. There's no room for springs in there. So um, you could, if you were trying to make a key for this, um, you could simply just cut all those holes and everything would work just fine. And let's see if I can get these pins out without making a huge mess. I like these half cylinders because you can sort of disassemble them the normal way. So that's the first driver, and I'm going to call that definitely a spool, no doubt about that. Big long one too. Top pin number two is magnetic, so he's steel, and I don't see any sort of serrations or anything on him, so he's a normal. Pin three. Number four, but there we go. I'm gonna call that serrated. So there's just a little, it may even be a, 
could possibly even call it a mushroom. There's a bevel there. A little hard to see, but it kind of angles in and then comes to the normal diameter. And number five is the same as pin three. It's got that little milling on it. Just a little bit. That one may be just tapered a little bit. And then pin number six is standard. So there's our pin stacks. So we have a spooled or possibly slightly mushroom key pin and a spool. We have a slightly spooled key pin and a normal. We have this sort of counter milled top pin and a either mushroomy or ser or serrated depending on how you look at it key pin serrated or mushroom top pin and a normal key pin um, I think I'm just going to call that a normal top pin and another call that spooled bottom pin and another spooled bottom pin and a normal that's a tough little set of pins there. Next thing to notice is that we have three relatively short bottom pins, uh, four rather in the middle, and then two long ones. And that's consistent with key fitting. Let's see if well that shows up on there. Now, this is pin one, he's just sitting in there. I'm going to turn it slightly and you can see the amount of relief that we have here. Now one of the things I was concerned with is as my pick goes in, so this is a um, diamond 025, this is not the pick I usually use, but if I just slip him underneath, that's almost overset. In fact, it may be overset. So I can not really afford to hardly touch that pin. And then as I come to set these other ones, I may grab one of the short pins. So there's our steel bottom pin and the one behind him. If I can we still one frame. Yeah. Drop him in. You can see he's a lot deeper. To come to set him, I have to be very, very careful. You can see I've got to really press up. Well, you can see that thing popping on that little spool. It wants to grab and then spew up. You can imagine what that's like when the driver's under tension. So there we go with the with that. And that's set. And I think that's probably the, that's the shallowest or second shallowest cut on this thing. So I have a, a challenge here of tooling, if you will, with my picks and my dimple picks are a bit thicker than this Peterson, which I'm probably going to have to um, file them down a little bit to get in there because if I even just come straight in, if I wiggle this at all, it's overset. And with that, um, with that uh, mushroom or serration in there, he's going to get all sorts of jammed and not want to come back. So it's, I've been feeling that overset, and it comes up and then feels like it's set on that um, mushroom. But of course, he's not going anywhere. And if you look at the key, sitting right next to him is that profile pin, and that's a pretty deep cut. Okay, so I have to maneuver my pick, whatever pick I'm using. Now that's sitting right on top here, and I bet they're almost touching if they're not actually touching. And, um, you know, there's a little bit of play in that, but not much. You can see it was sitting just a little bit low. So I've got to be able to maneuver my pick 
just barely touch him. And then when I get in here to go set this very high set pin, avoid touching this. This guy, avoid touching that. And again, and then the back, and then this guy. <clears throat> Not as worried about him. And when I looked at the key, it was very hard to see down the keyway. I knew that I had these two pins here, and I could feel them. I wasn't so sure back here. There's enough warding that it's, you can see there's a lot of warding in here, which means you actually have to get the tip of your pick up into this little groove. So you have to have kind of something a little bit sharp there to get up into that groove. This diamond might cut it. it might cut it. But um, I, now I know what I'm up against. And I uh, hope that was all in focus, yeah. Now I know what I'm up against. I don't know if it's going to make it any easier to pick. This is the top of the Bible. We have a drill pin here, or an anti-drill pin there. We have one here and one here. So that's pretty well protecting the, um, the pins, or the, the uh, that one's protecting the shear line, that's protecting the sides. And we have one, two, three, what look like steel um, caps on here. And I don't know how far down they go, but that's going to keep you from drilling in and uh, make it harder to drill all that crap out if you wanted to drill the, um, drill the block. Anyway, so Abyss 550 gutted, explored. And um, I think I now have a strategy to pick it. And I now know that I have almost no clearance underneath that, underneath this front and back pin. So that should help me. Anyway, this is Alex. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel uh, if you haven't already done so and if you like my videos. Um, and as always, have fun and keep it legal. Cheers.